ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a high Ohio silver. A Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I am Silver. Hooray! Bess Billings, a rough, strong-minded woman, owned a large freight line with headquarters in San Antonio, Texas. On several occasions during recent months, large shipments either going to or coming from the Mexican border were stolen by a gang of outlaws. One morning, Bess was talking to her manager, Carlos Mendoza, in her office. Carlos, there's another big shipment of valuable goods to be sent to Monterey leaving tomorrow. I want you to make certain their best men are assigned to get it through. Si, senora. I will put Pete in charge of the wagons. People are getting suspicious, Carlos. The shipments are insured, so the insurance company is the one that's taking the losses. But shippers are getting wary just the same. I think folks are beginning to suspect me of tipping off the gang when there's a valuable shipment. Why you bother about what they say, senora? They have no proof of such a thing. Yeah, the business won't stand much more of it, Carlos. We have to take precautions against further robberies. Si, senor. Now, uh, the wagons will be loaded during the night and will leave here at dawn. And tell Pete to pick his men carefully. Si. And there's one more thing. You're going to have to sort of take over for about a month, starting in a couple of weeks. I'm uh, expecting company. Well, of course, senora. Uh, may I ask who is the company who can make you take time off from your business? Remember I told you I had a son, Bob? You said he's in San Luis. Yeah, he went to school there. Then took some kind of job with a firm back east. Well, I had a letter saying he's coming out to visit me. Well, I haven't seen him for some years. He is a tenderfoot to the West, no? Oh, well, you might put it that way. But he's my son, and that's enough for me. Well, I'll better go and make arrangements for that ship. Uh, right away, senora. <laughs> Later that day, Carlos rode to a cabin in the nearby hills. Oh, 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 oh. Well, Sandy, you and the men must be ready for more action, no? Yeah, we're tired of sitting around. What's up this time? Another big shipment of valuable goods, senor. Pete will be leading the wagons, and he will cooperate with you. He will stop the wagons at the Nueces River and have the horses unhitched for watering. There, you will move in, bringing the usual pack horses to carry the cargo from the wagons. Now, stow it away in the large cave down the river. Later, we take it to the boat at Corpus Christi. All right, Carlos. We'll be there whenever you say it. The wagons leave at dawn tomorrow. You can judge about when they reach the river. Sure. We'll be there waiting. insurance office in St. Louis, Bob Billings sat listening as the manager of the company talked. Bob, we're sending you to San Antonio to investigate the freight line robberies. Now, your mother owns that line, and from what you tell me, doesn't know you're an insurance investigator, right? That's right, Mr. Manley. I figure you can go out there, presumably, just to visit your mother. I'm counting on you as our best man to solve those robberies. I'll do my best, sir. Uh, by the way, you'll need help. I've written to a certain padre in the West who will get in touch with a friend of mine, a masked man who rides with an Indian. A masked man? That's right. He helps keep law and order in the West. He's known as the Lone Ranger. Well, how will I get in touch with him? (laughs) Don't worry. He'll get in touch with you, Bob. Good. I already wrote Mother I'd be out to visit her in about two weeks. Uh, Don't tell her the purpose of your visit. You'll have to play the part of a visiting tenderfoot son for a while. No one need know you're an expert rider and gunman. <laughs> Don't worry, sir. I'll put on an act that'll make my mother wish I hadn't come out there. Very good. Now, remember, Bob, as a private investigator for this company, you've taken an oath to do your duty. 
Better go get packed. The train leaves tonight. I'll remember, Mr. Dooley. Goodbye. Goodbye and good luck. In San Antonio, the wagons had left on schedule. When they neared the Nueces River, Pete, who rode horseback alongside the head wagon, spoke to the driver. We'll stop at the river, Hank, to water the horses and let them rest a while. Good idea, Pete. It's plenty hot and dusty. I'll tell the other drivers to unhitch the horses and lead them into the water. All right, get up, Pete. Get up. Later at the river, the horses were unhitched from the six wagons when... Hey, look! You don't, we'll shoot you and the horse. Do as he says, man. There's too many for us. Throw your guns on the riverbank. Here's mine. I'll three of you men cover them while we transfer the cargo from the wagons to our pack horses. Let's go, men. Come on. The empty wagons return to San Antonio, and Bess Billings paced the floor of her office as she talked to Carlos and Pete. Oh, that gang knows every move we make. This sort of thing is going to ruin my business. For that least, senora, with the exception of Hank's shoulder wound, your men, wagons, and horses were unharmed. The insurance company is the only loser. That's just it. That company notified me. If we have further losses, they refuse to insure my shipments. And nobody will ship anything under those circumstances. Some of them must be tipping off that gang. By thunder, if I could find out who it is, I'd wring his neck. A large gang, Mrs. Billings. Ten of them. Have you reported this to the sheriff? Well, sure, first thing. He left with a big posse. But it rained last night, so the crook's tracks will be washed away. Oh, I've got to do something about it. But what can you do, senora? We can put on more men, but I'm Here, sure... wait a minute. A friend of mine, Clarabelle Hornblow, knows the Lone Ranger. I'm going to get a message to Clarabelle and see if she can persuade him to come here. The Lone Ranger? I've heard of him. Yeah, yes, so have I. Who hasn't? Believe me, if he does come here, I reckon that gang will really sit up and take notice. Some days later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto, at the request of their good friend Clarabelle, rode to the territory near San Antonio. As they stopped to rest their horses, Toto said, You think gang that robbed freight line still operate around here, Kimasabi? Well, from what Mrs. Billings said in her letter to Clarabelle, that gang has been operating for some time, Toto. Oh. She lives in a large house on the edge of town. After dark, we'll go there and get the details from her. That good idea. Uh, what about message you get from Pondre? About a young fella from St. Louis. Strangely enough, the young man is Mrs. Billings' son, Bob. He may have arrived by now. If he has, we'll not let his mother know we were to meet him. Be savvy. According to Mr. Manley's letter that the Padre showed me, Bob is to investigate the robberies while he's presumably visiting his mother. Even she isn't to know he's the insurance investigator. Well, we'll work with him to solve the robberies and find the gang. Well, let's go, Tonto. <laughs> That morning, the train from the east flowed to a stop at the railroad station. Carlos and Pete were on the edge of the curious crowd who had gathered at the station. That is her son, eh? He's well built. Strong looking, no? Huh? Yeah, yeah, but he's dressed like a dude, Carlos. You don't think we'll have to worry about him, do you? I don't know yet, Pete. That remains to be seen. We must get to know him better before we say he's not to be worried about. Hey, look. He and Bess are heading for the office. I reckon we'll get a chance to meet him and talk to him later. Yeah, of course. The senora will want us to meet her son. She'll tell him all about the robberies. And if he's any kind of an hombre, he'll want to help find out who pulled him. Perhaps. But if the sheriff can't find out, Pete, 
I'm sure we have nothing to fear from that Easterner. Let us walk to the office. Yeah, I thought you were going out to see Sandy this morning. Well, that kind of way. I want to be around when the senor decides we should meet that son of hers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, good idea. He'll be able to tell in a few minutes what kind of an hombre he is. I sure hope he's not the snooping kind. If he is, that will be very bad for him. Bob Billings might have an accident that would keep him from going back east. <laughs> In fact, he might take his final trip to Booth Hill. <laughs> uh, we'll soon find out about him, Pete. Do not worry. Later, Bess called in Carlos and Pete to introduce her son. You sent for us, senor? Yeah, Carlos. I want you and Pete to meet my son, Bob. Bob, this is my manager, Carlos, and Pete, the wagon boss. Uh, Hello, Carlos, Pete. My mother's been telling me about the outlaw gang that's been operating against the freight line. Oh, see, senor Bob, it is a big gang. They seem to have a smart leader, eh, Pete? That's right. Mother, I... I sure wish there was something I could do to help catch them. Oh, forget it, Bob. We've got to admit you're a tenderfoot, and you'd be no match for hombres like them. Takes a real hombre with plenty of nerve to go after men like them. Hey, listen, you. If you're insinuating that my son isn't a real man, No, well, nothing I'm... like that, ma'am. Oh. Just that, well, an eastern dude. Well, I mean, tenderfoot like Bob would be scared to... Uh, look, what I mean now, is... Pete is trying to say, senora, that... Your son would be no match for such hombres as those tough outlaws. Well, don't see that you two have been any kind of match for them either. <laughs> well, Bob and I are going home to supper. We'll see you both later. So long. Yeah, so long. Well, Let's go, go. Home, yeah. All right. If I could shoot, maybe I could. Hear that, Carlos? Mother, I sure wish there was something I could do to help catch him. <laughs> hey, what a dude. And we were afraid he might be the Snoopy type. <laughs> we have nothing to worry about from him, Senor P. Hey, but the masked man and his Indian friend will be getting here before long. What about them, Carlos? Do not worry, Pete. The Senora will introduce me to them. Then I watch them closely. If they seem to be getting on our track, they will not live long enough to tell about it. to the Billings house on the edge of town. Oh, oh, a masked hombre. What? Oh, wait a minute. You must be the Lone Ranger. That's right, Mrs. Billings. This is my friend, Toto. I heard all about both of you from Clarabelle. Come right on in. Thank you. Now, Bob, before you get upset, I want you to meet a couple of friends. Don't worry about that mess. They're not outlaws. I'm glad you told me. How do you do? Good evening, Bob. Glad to meet you. Bob has a job in St. Louis. He's new to this country. <laughs> well, I reckon you can at least ride a horse, though. Of course I can, Mother. <laughs> we do have horses in St. Louis, you know. Now, Bob, you talk to our friends while I rustle up some coffee. I'll be back in a few minutes. Bob, I received Mr. Manley's letter. Good. I was wondering how I'd meet you. Didn't expect you to come here. You're not wearing a gun belt. No. I carry a gun in the holster strapped under my arm inside my shirt. Good. Now, uh, keep up the pose of being a tenderfoot. You may find out something. That's what I plan to do. Todd and I are camped in a stand of cottonwood just south of town if you want to get in touch with us. Good. Well, put on some coffee. And while it's getting ready, mister, I'll give you the details of the robberies by the gang. Fine. And before I do that, though, let me tell you this. We'll send in another shipment to the border day after tomorrow, and if anything happens to that arm, ruin. Let's hope we can prevent another robbery. Well, I sure hope so. After I tell you everything, I'll have you meet my manager, Carlos Mendoza. I told him to drop in. He'll be along shortly. Now, about those robberies. The first one took place a couple of months ago. Later, Carlos arrived to meet the Lone Ranger and Tonto. 
the Lone Ranger discussed the shipment that was to go out in two days and suggested a plan. I suggest that Toto and I follow the wagons at a distance. If the gang attacks, have your drivers give up immediately. Then when the outlaws leave with their pack horses and the cargo, we'll trail them to their hideout while someone goes for the sheriff. See, si, see, si, that is a very good idea. What do you think, Senora Billings? If that's the way the masked man wants it, we'll do it that way. Instruct the man. Yes, si, Senora. I will go now. Let us hope the plan works, Senor. If it doesn't, my company will be sunk for sure. Adios, everyone. Good night. Good night, Carlos. Well, Toto, time we went back to our camp. Uh, Bob, would you care to walk to our horses with us? Perhaps I can give you some helpful information about the West. Go on, Bob. You can learn a lot from the masked man. Be glad to. Good night, Mrs. Billings. We'll do our best to see that those outlaws are captured. Good night. want to change our plans. Why? Right now, I don't trust anyone who works for your mother's company. If they all think we're following the first plan, well and good. What other plan do you have? I suggest you identify yourself to the sheriff. Have him meet you with his men about two miles from town. Then what? Suggest that he bring about 20 men. Your mother said she's sending five wagons. Have the sheriff hide three men in each wagon. Uh, that's 15. The other five men will follow at a distance, leading the horses. Hey, that's a fine idea. Tell them not to go into action until the outlaws start to unload. Not and I'll be close enough to move in and help. Fine. The sheriff and I are riding one of the wagons. But what about the drivers? If one of them is not to be trusted... Watch everybody connected with the wagons. All right. I'll see the sheriff in the morning. Good. We'll be seeing you, Bob. Good night. Good night. Good night. The morning the wagons were to leave, Carlos secretly met Pete for a short talk in the office before Bess arrived. Pete, the plan is to have the drivers give up at once. Then the masked man and Indian plan to follow Sandy and the gang after they load the pack horses. Holy mack. But we shall trick them. The shipment is headed for Monterey in Mexico. Now, when the trail goes through a stretch of woods, the gang will move in and take over the wagons. And they will drive them straight on through to Mexico. <laughs> the masked man will be following at a distance, and he will not know anything is wrong. Sandy and the gang will move in quietly, so there will be no gun by them. Hey, that fits in just right. Mrs. Billings told the drivers last night, no matter what happens, to give up without a fight. I know. Well, I go tell Sandy now. Delay the wagons for about an hour and then start. When the wagons finally reached a point two miles from town, Pete was surprised to see the sheriff with Bob and 20 men ride from a stand of trees. Stop the wagons! Oh, oh, there! Oh, oh, there! This is Bob Billings, Bess Billings' son. He'll be giving the orders from now on. Hey, what is this? We're changing the plans. The sheriff's men are going to ride inside the wagons with the cargo. Hey, now, hold on. I was put in charge of these wagons. If you're going to interfere, I'm going to turn them over to you and go back to town. Get up, Pete. Wait a minute. Hey, let go of my horse's bridle. You're not leaving, Pete. Get off your horse and get onto the seat of the first wagon beside the driver. Well, no tenderfoot's going to tell me what to do. Hold it. Hey, what a fast draw. He's no tenderfoot. Drop your gun. Drop it. Yeah, all right. You may be in the clear, but I'm making sure. You'll ride on the wagon seat, and I'll be in the wagon with a gun at your back if you try anything. All right, Sheriff, let's get the man into the wagon. Go so on, get moving. Go along, get along. When the sheriff's men were hidden inside the wagons, Bob gave the order to move on. All right, let's go. Get it was early afternoon when the wagons reached the long stretch of woods of which Carlos had spoken. All right, men, there's the wagons. Let's go. Get up. Come on. Get up. 
the outlaw gang rode out in front of the wagons with menacing guns. Stop those wagons! Oh, 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 oh. Hey, Pete, what are you doing riding the wagon seat? I, I just decided to ride this way, that's all. All right, you drivers, you're all covered. Throw your guns to the ground. Now, let me get down, all except Pete. My men will tie and gag you and hide you in the woods with our horses. Somebody will find you there later. Get moving. The drivers were taken into the woods, then tied and gagged. Then the gang's horses were hidden among the trees back from the trail, with the idea that Carlos would get them later. Finally, Sandy called out, All right, men. There are five wagons. That means two of you on each seat. All right. As the men started to climb onto the wagon seats, Pete suddenly leaped from the first wagon, shouting, Stay away! Run for the woods! Bob Billings leaned forward and fired. Oh, my leg! Pete, oh, sure. get him quick! Right! Let him have it! The sheriff's men sprang from the wagons with guns blazing. The outlaws, taken completely by surprise, fought back desperately. The leader, Sandy, still on horseback, spurred his horse down the trail. Get up there. Come on. The leader's getting away. Come The Lone Ranger and Toto had heard the gunfire and urged their horses into a gallop. The masked man saw the leader, Sandy, the only man mounted, heading down the trail. Without stopping near the wagons, he started in pursuit. Faster, big fellow. Faster. Come on, Silver. Sandy heard the famous cry, and panic-stricken turned in the saddle and fired. When his gun clicked on empty cartridges, he holstered it, then gave his attention to losing the masked figure behind him. But the great horse, Silver, exerted every effort to lessen the distance between them. Then the Lone Ranger used his lariat. The rope suddenly snaked out and dropped around Sandy's shoulders. Hey! Oh, no! oh, As Silver instinctively reared back, the taut line dragged Sandy from the saddle. Steady, big fella, easy, easy now. Oh. Oh. All right, you get up. No, don't, don't shoot. I, I hurt my shoulder. I'm taking you back to the wagons. Oh. Then you'll do some fast talking if you don't want to die. Oh. Now get going. <laughs> By the time the Lone Ranger arrived at the wagons with Sandy, the gang had been subdued. Pete and Sandy outdid each other in putting the blame on Carlos. When they finished, the sheriff spoke. We'll pick up Carlos when we get back to town. Well, here comes the rest of my men leading our horses. My mother sure was taken in by a fine bunch of crooks. I can't understand it. Carlos was taken in by you. He thought you were a tenderfoot. I don't savvy all this. Bob Billings is the insurance investigator. What? And far from being a tenderfoot. <laughs> Bob, I think you ought to resign and come run your mother's business. Well, that's a good idea, Sheriff. Now that I've met that masked man, I want to get to know him better. And uh... Hey, where is he? Hey, the Indian is gone, too. <laughs> I saw him leaving quietly a while ago, after they helped attend to the wounded. Bob, there's one hombre who doesn't hang around after a job is done. He saw that his plan worked out and the gang got captured. That's all he's interested in. But if you decide to stay out here, I guarantee you'll never have a finer friend than the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. Tonight's drama was written by Dan Beatty. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Uh-huh.